now that I found an image that I want to work with, I'm going to go ahead and pull that into Photoshop and start removing my subject from the background. So here's my file. There's a couple ways you can open this in Photoshop. You can either drag it to the Photoshop icon, but another thing you can do is you can right click and open with Photoshop. What you can't do is just double click on it because it's a JPEG and if you double click on it, it's going to open in preview and we don't want that. Now, when you pull an image off of the internet, it's usually not the size and resolution that you want to work with. First of all, hopefully you found a good high quality image by searching large images and then clicking view image. So if that's the case, then you, you are working with a good quality. However, it still is probably not the correct size and resolution for what you want for print. So we're going to use the crop tool to help us get it to what we want. It's never a good idea just to take a picture off the internet and stay with that size and resolution as the file that you're working with because you just don't know what you're getting and that will probably decrease the quality. And since you got it off of the web, it's probably at 72 pixels per inch because that's standard for web images. On the crop tool, you wanna be on width by height by resolution and we're going to make this project 11 inches by 14 inches with a resolution of 300. If your image is more landscape, then you can flip those. You can make it 14 inches by 11 inches with 300 pixels per inch resolution. Okay, so for Zoe here, my width is going to be 11, my height 14, and my resolution 300. Okay, and that is just about in perfect proportion with what I have. So that was really good. Now some of you may have to make adjustments with this and move it around or pull it up higher, but mine happened to be in that same proportion as an 11 by 14. So I'm going to go ahead and accept. Okay, and you notice that the picture just enlarged. That tells me that the pixels per inch were not at 300. So I did increase my resolution. I can hit command zero to fit it back on page. All right, so I can check that now by going to image, image size, and it's showing me that I have um, the 11 inch by 14 inch with the 300 resolution. Okay, now that I have that done, I wanna remove my subject from the background. So we're going to first select our subject and probably the best selection tool for that is going to be the quick selection tool. So if your magic wand is showing, please press and hold and go to the quick selection tool. The only exception to this is if you're working with a solid color background, then you probably want to use the magic wand, select the background, and then select the inverse of that. If you need help with that, let me know. But most of us probably have something going on in the background, so we want to just click and drag and get our subject selected the best that we can. Okay, every once in a while, I'll let go of the mouse so I can get always back to that spot where I'm at right now. If you have any trouble with this, let me know. The size that you're working with, by the way, is telling Photoshop just how many pixels it's looking for. So if I wanted to go to a smaller area, for example, I'm gonna zoom into her hair right here. So let's say I wanted to select some of this. This is way too big, so I would have to use my left bracket. This works just like when you're on the brush tool. Left bracket decreases, right bracket increases. And this will help me to kind of fine tune my selection a little bit better in those areas. But now this area is very large, so I'd go back to having Photoshop look for a greater number of pixels. Okay, over here, you'll notice that we went outside of our subject. When that happens, what you can do is, I'm gonna pull this, let's see, right there. Notice that there's a plus sign in the middle of that tool. If I hold the option key, it switches to a minus. And while I'm holding the option key, I can go in the other direction and pull these 
back. Okay, so I'm just gonna go around while I'm zoomed in a little bit more and see how my selection is here. I think if I wanted to include her strands of hair here, I would pull this out a little bit further. And we're going to use the Select and Mask tool to help us get a better selection, especially of these little hair pieces. And we'll, we'll do that in a minute. But it's good to start with a good selection first, the best selection that we can get. So I'm using the hand tool so I can just easily grab and go around and see what my selection looks like. I think I'll just keep this out. And then at any point I can just grab my quick selection tool and grab some more or less. And just check this edge down here. Okay, so I'm thinking that my selection looks okay. So I'm going to Command Zero to zoom out. And then up on my Tools Option Panel, well, first of all, you have to be on a selection tool. So you can go back to the Quick Selection tool. And when you're on a selection tool, you'll have the option to select and mask. So go ahead and click on that. And it gives you an idea of what your selection looks like currently. Now, if you're seeing a lot of the background, that's because the transparency is down. So you can move the transparency up so you can see exactly what you're getting and you can change the view. So right now I'm on what they call onion skin. So basically it's showing me that that transparent layer, but I could look at it on black, for example, and then again, I need to work with that transparency. And so on black, I think is a good way to view this particular image because it's really showing me where I need to do some work. Okay, and that's where this mask and select tool comes in really handy. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm going to go to my edge detection. If that's not showing, click on the arrow and click smart radius. And I'm going to tell Photoshop to look around my image, not too much. I'm gonna say two pixels. So that's telling Photoshop to look around the selection I had, look in and out two pixels. So look out two pixels, look in two pixels and see if I missed anything there or if I went too far or too close in. All right, now if I click on show edge up here, so it's showing me there's those two pixels where, where I told it to look. Now, if I feel like I can go a little bit further, you can pull this out. Okay, and it's looking a little bit further than two pixels. All right, I'm gonna take sh um, show edge off now so I can see what I've got. And then the other thing that I wanna do around the hair. Now this is for really selecting hair. If you come over to the left side, you wanna select the Refine Edge Brush tool, which is the second tool down. And you can zoom in while you do this. So I'm going to zoom in to the top of her head right now so we can see what's happening. And it's really important that you have the right size here. So you want, the size I have right now is pretty good. And again, the brackets will increase right bracket or decrease left bracket. So I want to just paint along the edge of her hair there to tell Photoshop to look out a little bit further here to see if I missed anything. And we can look at that if I click on show edge again, you can see where we've told Photoshop to look. Now if at any point you feel like you went out too far, you can hold option and pull that back in. so that it's not looking quite so far out or in some cases quite so far in. So I'm just going to continue to paint along these edges and I will speed this up. OK, 
Okay, now in these larger areas where there's a lot of background showing through, you want to increase that size so you can tell Photoshop to look all in this area. And hopefully it's going to detect the hair and the background and keep the hair and remove the background. Okay, so it kind of did that. That looks better and it'll look even better when I output to Photoshop. This also has a hand tool for moving around easily. Okay, once you feel like that hair selection is looking a lot better, you can go ahead and go down to where it says output settings. And this is important. You want to output to a new layer with a layer mask and then click OK. You'll notice that I didn't use that selected mask around her skin areas or her shirt. It was really only around the hair. And we do use select in mask for other things that don't include hair. However, you wouldn't be using that refine edge paint tool as much for that type of a thing. Okay, so now that I have my subject with the background removed, and you can see on my layers that I have a layer mask now. And so that is just hiding the background here. What I want to do is I want to use that layer mask to fix this up even more. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer. This is going to be a temporary layer. I'm going to drag it underneath my layer mask layer. And I want to just dump a color that's going to help me really see what's going on behind there. So I'm thinking something like in the orange range, something like that's gonna really help me see what's going on. So with my paint bucket, while I'm on that layer one, that temporary layer, I'm just going to dump that out. And my selection looks pretty good. I think the um, select and mask tool did a really good job. But I'm just gonna go around. Once I'm zoomed in, I can use the move tool to navigate. Okay, so it looks a little bit weird right here. So while on the layer mask, make sure you're on the layer mask, that's really important you can paint both black and white to either bring your image back or hide it some more. So hit your default black and white. Let's start with black. So if I want to hide this where it's kind of sticking out and it looks a little odd, I can do that. It's also maybe a good idea since it's hair to maybe move your hardness to about 50. So you're not on a completely hard brush, but you're not on a super soft brush either. And then that'll give it just kind of a little bit of a softer edge, which I think hair has naturally. Okay, now be careful about bringing stuff back. I'm gonna do this and then I'm going to undo it, like in this area, because the problem is you're also bringing back that background and we don't want that. So I'm going to Command Z. So if you wanna bring anything back, it really has to be hair strand by hair strand here. So think really carefully before you make a decision to do that. Okay, so moving along. Okay, I think I'll paint some black here again. Just I have a little bit of strands hanging out. A little too far, I think. Let's just smooth that out. And with that, I think I have a good selection and I'm ready to move on to my next step for next time. Before I save, I'm going to throw this temporary layer away. And I want to rename this background copy to Zoe, which is the name of my subject.
You can name it subject if you want, but you can make it more personalized and name it uh, who the person is if you know their name. The last thing I wanna do today is I want to do a save as, because this is the first time I'm saving, and I wanna make sure I'm in my folder, so I'm just gonna go through the steps. So you need to be on the desktop, find your folder, I have levels, you guys won't have that. If you made a subfolder for this, go to that. And you're going to type in your last name, your first name, and Warhol. And save. That is it for this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions or need help with anything.